Welcome back everyone. Thanks for checking out another video. I'm just editing a video that was left over from 2024. 2024 was a great year. I'm hoping to make 2025 even better. More videos, more content, uh, but let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys wanna see. This video that I'm editing is one that I'd wanted to, wanted to do for a while, but it took getting the right car into the shop to do it. I think it turned out great. It emphasizes the benefits of uh, taking the time and doing the 50 degree VTC cam gear wheel. Uh, if you do a K24 swap. But uh, anyways, before we cut to the video, I just wanted to mention we do have shirts on the website now. We have some t-shirts and, and a hoodie. So if you're interested, do me a favor, check it out. Hopefully these shirts do well and uh, we can take those proceeds and reinvest them in the channel and grow the channel even more. But anyways, that's it for now. Let's cut to the video. Welcome back everyone. Thanks for checking out another video. Ricky brought his 2011 8th gen Civic Si in for a tune today and I thought this would be a great opportunity to make another comparison video. So this Civic is K24 swapped and full bolt-on. It also has the two mods that everyone wants, the uh, 50 degree VTC cam gear wheel because the stock K24 only has a 25 degree VTC cam gear wheel. It also has a ported Type S oil pump. In this video, I wanted to show the benefits of doing the 50 degree VTC cam gear wheel on a K24. I get asked all the time, is it worthwhile to do the 50 degree VTC cam gear wheel on a K24 before you go and swap it in one of these 8th gens? And my answer is always yes, because you pick up a bunch of mid-range power when you have the ability to advance VTC more than 25 degrees in the mid-range. So this car is all tuned. I have comparison dynographs of a pull just at standard 25 degree VTC from the beginning of the pull to redline. And then I have the final graph to compare it to where I've tuned VTC up to a maximum of 40 degrees in certain areas. But first, let's go through the details of this build. I'll share some shots of the dyno pulls, and then I'll show you the dyno graph comparison at the end. All right, so like I said, this is basically a full bolt-on build. The owner swapped in a 2008 Acura TSX engine, so the K24A2 engine from a 2008 Acura TSX. Before swapping it in, he did install the 50-degree VTC cam gear wheel out of a K20 engine, and then also an RSX Type S oil pump that was ported to get a little bit more flow. Other than that, the engine is internally stock, so the stock 2008 K24A2 cams, pistons, rods. The only internal upgrades were the 50 degree VTC cam gear and the oil pump. Starting at the intake side of things, there is a hybrid racing cold air intake, an Acura ZDX throttle body, an RBC intake manifold that was cut, port and polished, a set of RDX injectors, Skunk 2 Alpha header, and an RV6 uh, catback exhaust. I tuned this car on a Honda Data Flash Pro. It is on pump gas, 94 octane pump gas, and it is a stock fuel pump in the tank. So I believe that takes care of all the details of this build. Why don't we cut to the shots of the dyno poles and then I'll show you the final results.
All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed those dyno pulls, but I'm sure you're eager to see what this car put down today. So on the screen, I have two dyno graphs. One is of the final tune with the final VTC settings, and one is of a pull where I just had the VTC set at 25 degrees, which simulates if you only had a 25 degree VTC cam gear wheel in here and you couldn't go more than 25 degrees. So I'm pretty sure you can figure out which one's which. In red is the final tune with the final VTC cam gear settings. The red dyno pull, uh, down low in non VTEC, it's basically 25 degrees up until about 4,000, and then I start ramping it up slowly to 30. Uh, VTEC is engaged at 4,400 RPM, and in VTEC, VTC is set to 40 degrees till about 6,000 RPM, where power starts falling off naturally. And from there, I start tapering it down to 25 degrees. Tapering from 40 degrees VTC down to 25 degrees VTC made the most power, and that's what we ended up with. In blue, is just 25 degrees straight across. You lose a whole bunch of mid-range power. In this case, I left VTEC at 4,400 just to show you how much power you would lose. Uh, and then you would have to actually engage VTEC slightly higher if you had only the 25 degree VTC cam gear to work with. You'd probably end up having to have it at like 46, 4,700 RPM and you lose all that power under the curve. Ultimately, the peak horsepower is basically the same because in the end, 25 degrees VTC right at redline ended up being the best value to use. So both runs ended up making basically 243, 242 horsepower, basically the same. But the big difference is the mid-range torque. With 40 degrees VTC in the mid-range, we were able to hit 202 torque. With only 25 degrees VTC in the mid-range, we were only able to hit 188 torque. So to answer that question, is it worthwhile to install a 50 degree VTC cam gear wheel on a K24? My answer is always yes. It's definitely worthwhile to get that mid-range power. All right, guys, well, I think that's about it for this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I do really like these opportunities where I can do a little bit of comparison and share some information that may help you in your build. Anyways, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks again for watching. If you liked the video, do me a favor, hit that like button. If you haven't already, consider subscribing, and I will uh, see you in the next one, guys. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye now.